Sadiq Sethi and I am a communication designer. Thank you TEDx Triple IT Bangalore for having me over for this talk. Today I'm going to speak about how to excel in the creative industry via 15 memes from Monty Python. Now the reason I choose memes is because memes are a part of popular culture and they are a part of how we communicate today. So you must be wondering what is a meme? Well a meme is an element of a culture or system of behavior passed from one individual to another by imitation or other non-genetic means an image video piece of text etc typically humorous in nature that is copied and spread rapidly by internet users often with slight variations this definition is from the oxford language dictionary monty python was a series that was started in 1969 and ran through all the way till 2014 the pythons like they like to call themselves was a group of individuals who brought about drastic change in satire humor comedy but talking about real world issues like power gender society and so on and so forth they set about creating an important moment in the evolution of television comedy things which were in satire and dark humor but at the same time were identified as being humorous it was considered okay and this was back in 1969 in the 70s so why is it today with sensitized audiences that we get so disturbed uh, by another point of view this is something that we should be aware of and we should be ready to tackle to excel in the creative industry you need to be bold it's extremely important for you to get out there so i'll start with the first meme explore 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 to look at everything in life and learn from it exploration does not just mean that you just go in one direction you should be able to take on multi facets you should be able to take on different thoughts and always look at a point not just from a particular direction but from over under around it to try and encapsulate and try and visualize a holistic picture for me communication design is problem solving and being a designer means that we have to find the right solutions for our clients or the problem that we are trying to solve Take on Goliath. Always be ready to take on challenges. Put yourself in a situation in which you feel that you're not going to be comfortable, but excel and rise to the task. Take on bigger companies. Take on bigger tasks. Take on bigger thoughts. Always try and level up the game. Um, always try and level up your own personal learnings, and always try and level up your team. So always be ready to take on challenges. That is the key learning from this point. Make your own reality. As a creative it's extremely important for us to use our imagination and our imagination is one of our key tools that we can use to build different worlds scenarios products things that can be utilized by people in general believe in yourself believe in yourself believe in your team believe in the project that you're working on if you believe in what you are working on that's half the battle won it's necessary for you to understand the fact that yes there are going to be problems yes there are going to be concerns yes there are going to be massive uh, issues that are going to come up i mean otherwise it would be pretty bland uh, there are going to be uh, things that are going to come as hurdles in your way but you have to believe in yourself you have to believe in your team's capabilities and you have to make sure that you work about find the constraints work about them um, and get on with it break the rhythm we as designers get stuck in the rut always try and find maybe newer ways of doing different tasks or the same task it kind of spices up the scenario it spices up the product it spices up the the way you function and how things can be built so don't get stuck in the rut don't get stuck in your style don't get stuck in the way you like to do things uh, you know keep keep using the earlier explore methods keep trying to figure out newer ways of Uh, building things together getting people together uh, and and working on different projects mistakes make it the man we all talk about all the successes that people have had and all the great things they've done and the awards they won but what we don't realize is that with every success there were a thousand mistakes as well and those mistakes is actually what makes the project or the man I mean, we've all heard about edison and and tesla and we've also know about their uh, their achievements but at the same time uh, we also know about the fact that they had thousands of experiments that they worked on before and those experiments also led to different discoveries not just be stuck on the the glory per se but also look at the the stepping stones to that point which makes the product unique or which makes our journey unique 
I'm a broadcast kid. For me, broadcast is an extremely important part of the whole process. Today, with social media, it's become really easy for us to get our ideas out there. Uh, but at the same time, there's so much more happening, and there are people doing so much of work that you kind of get lost in the noise, or you get lost in the clutter, so to speak. When I joined television, I was like, oh, I'm gonna pull my eyes out the amount of content that was going on. And luckily, at that time, there was a definite need for science-based shows and science-based learning, and we found that gap. And uh, you know, I was luckily pulled in by the seniors from uh, from the network, from the production houses, and they they found something in me. They saw something in me and my team, and that's how, as a team, as a unit, we were able to create content which was um, science oriented, which was not just uh, entertainment; it was edutainment, and that for us was a massive stepping stone. Learn to give and take feedback. Learn to use feedback. We a lot of the times show our work to our our uh, clients and our superiors, and we're like, "Look, this is a masterpiece, and this is a piece of art, and what not rubbish." In the creative industry, it becomes necessary for you to yes, create unique concepts, experiences, or unique ideas, but at the same time, those need to materialize into usable products or usable thoughts or or tangible. Uh, requirements as per what the brief is to so follow the whole process the process of not just having a great piece of art or a great piece of communication but is that usable important for you to take feedback from the end user and that is an extremely integral part of the whole creative industry and of course even uh, design let your work blow your trumpet Uh, there are a lot of times i meet people who talk about oh you know we've done this we've done that we've done this and that and we're so great and blah 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 and you're like okay great let me have a look at their work and you're like mm, you know this work and <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> i've seen better um and at at some level that's that's fantastic that look they're out there they're pushing their work uh, but at the same time your work should be able to blow trumpets as well so rather than just being all hot air your work should be able to speak for itself and uh, only way to do that is to do great work and doing great work can only happen when you rejoice with your crew once you've done things you need to enjoy it you need to enjoy the whole process yes there are going to be times at which you're going to be like i can't take this anymore uh, but you need to understand there is a joy in that as well um, and i don't mean that in in a sadistic way uh, but there is a joy in every aspect of the process uh, of creativity and you should definitely rejoice all aspects and parts of it when times are tough when things are are not headed anywhere when you feel like you're uh, you're having a mental block or you're stuck somewhere uh, it becomes very necessary to adapt and when you adapt or pivot or when you when you look at the same problem from a different angle that's when things start coming to light and that really helps uh in understanding how uh, you know you can move this project further in terms of also at the same time uh, when you're working in a team it helps uh, reposition rejig the dynamic and uh, that really comes in handy in the process uh an example of this is we saw the bhava chakra which is the wheel of life and it is about samsara which is the circle of life and death in uh, in tibetan indian buddhism uh, we always see it as a flat painting on the wall of uh, monasteries of learning areas uh, and buddhist temples and there are only two or three places in the world where uh, the three you know you'll see a sort of uh, 3d esque bhav chakra so one is at the dazu rock carvings which is a unesco heritage site in china and there is another one which is an embossed version the 3d representation which is there in china is uh, is there but it's not a complete front back um so it's and even the embossing is is just a raised embossing so we decided that look let's let's try and visualize what would happen behind so let's let's make a three dimensional bhava chakra it took us more than a year to complete this model um, as it's an extremely intricate model and we were working between uh, shifts so to speak take something which is flat and give it another perspective and and that's the power of adaptation which is by looking at something and a lot of versions of it and a lot of examples of it we were able to create this this piece of art collaborate nothing in life happens in isolation there is always other beings involved you are as strong as your team you need to collaborate with a lot of people to be able to get and create things and push the envelope personally as well as a team or a unit or a group of people working towards a common goal
and collaboration is something that has brought uh, a lot of us together. Uh, the Animators Guild of India is one such platform. Indians, but we don't get to hear about them because on the global platform, they're lost in the clutter or they're lost in the noise. So this Animators Guild became a great platform for us to disseminate information, a, a, a place which becomes a library of thought, showcasing the fantastic Indian talent, doing some great design, art and animation work. Now, in all of this, when you're working in the creative industry, at some point it can get very overwhelming. We can have burnouts, we can be completely brain fried and we're just like, okay, look, I can't do this anymore. And you need time out because your brain is on overdrive most of the time. So it becomes necessary to have pet projects because pet projects then kind of help you spend your energies in ways which are beyond just the client approach or problem solving. And these pet projects are extremely necessary for the creative mind. So one such pet project that I have is the Folktales of India. And in this pet project, what we're doing is we take a folktale from a particular region of India and match it up with an art form of that region and then animate the folktale using that art form. A lot of these art forms are not animated. Inscriptions, they're like patras, they're like manuscripts, scrolls, paintings, and so on and so forth. And what this became as another great uh, effort towards adaptation collaboration was that we were able to get in a lot of artists and directors and uh, team members to be able to build these, uh, these stories. So it has become a great tool for us to showcase the beautiful folk tales of the Indian subcontinent. At the same time, uh, a good platform for the excessive energies that I uh, and my team have, uh, you know, in between project time and to kind of uh, help build it as a pet project that at some day we can make it into a repository of, you know, a thousand folk tales maybe because in India, we have so much art every 50 kilometers, uh, the demograph changes, the people's lifestyles, their, their uh, whole uh, outlook changes uh, from their arts, language, you know, culture, everything. There is so much cultural heritage that we have that still is to be showcased uh, to the world at large. Value your time, value your time, value your teammates time value, your clients time value, everybody's time. Yes, you need time to explore, you need time to experiment, you need time to research, you need time to follow your heart, you need time which is downtime. But you need to remember that all of this comes together to be a part of, um, all of this comes together and all of this needs to be valued. So for whatever purpose you are sanctioning your time, you need to value it. Let there be a complete nothingness uh, because for you to create something, there should also be nothing and let your brain go completely silent for a while. Uh, meditate, yoga, take time out is an extremely important, important part of the creative process. Give your body its due as well. My motto has always been to make sure that we have a good ride and uh, make sure that everybody around me, my team, my people, everybody is growing together with us and we're getting better and better as every day and every project comes along. Besides that, another extremely important learning has been patience. That's it from me. Thank you so much TEDx, IIIT Bangalore for this opportunity. I hope you enjoyed the talk and have a great day.